and you will affect them in a, in a, in a, in a more severe way than all that she can do. You say, wait a minute, preacher, you're beating up on the dads. Well, I get paid for that. <laughs> and you know what? Moms, you know that if your daughters are going to truly honor the Lord and, and, and desire to be a Proverbs 31 woman, you need to be that Proverbs 31 woman. You need to be the most you need, you need to be the most important influence in their life. Amen. And when we just simply think, you know what, I'm not a bad person. I mean, I'm not teaching my kids how to drink. You know, we're not, we're not doing drugs, or at least illegal drugs. <laughs> so it's not that big a deal. Yes, it is. Because the Christian influence is the most powerful influence on this planet. Amen. And more important than being an ambassador uh, from the United States, be an ambassador for Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, you are if you're a born-again Christian. I mean, let's, let, let's set the scene for what we've just read. I mean, think about what's going on here. <clears throat> and pardon me for coughing, but we've got to keep on breathing. So let's stop and consider this. This is pretty exciting when you... Do you do this? I do. Wouldn't you love to be a fly on the wall when you read some of these encounters that take place in the Bible? Wouldn't you love to be right there? Well, let's, let's transport ourselves to this very time, this very place. The Sanhedrin was in session. This was the ruling body of the Jews. Their supreme court, it was composed of leaders who represented high priestly class. The leading citizens of the nation, the lawyers, the Pharisees, the air was electric with their authority. In the middle of this powerful body of men were two simple men, former fishermen, not long removed from the rough life they knew. The ruling body had already said contentiously, these men are just unlearned and ignorant men. Though they did not have a degree in rabbinical school, these two men evidenced the fact that they had been to another kind of school. Because there was a difference in their lives. They were bold. Scripture says they saw the boldness of Peter and John. There was something about these men that was inescapably frank. They were gladly fearless. They were courageous and confident. They could stand in the midst of this authoritative religious body and say what they wanted to say. They were free men with free speech. There, there was something different about them. You see, they had a secret in their lives and they expressed themselves it was their amazing Christian influence that carried their message across to the lives of those who were listening. I'll tell you, when it comes to unlearned and ignorant, you don't know anything unless you know Jesus Christ. And when you come to know Christ as your Savior, as Paul would put it, I know nothing save Jesus Christ. You know, I'll tell you, I'm impressed when I get around people who know computers, and that would be everybody but me. I mean, I love to play with them and mess them up, and then start yelling and screaming and praying for somebody to come along that can help fix them and do all the things that need to be done. And I'm amazed at, at just uh, the professionalism and the capability I see of people who are, who are thoroughly trained and, and well-equipped to do whatever it is that they do. I mean, all of our school teachers here, they have uh, put in a lot of time and effort in, in honing their skills and sharpening their ability to be able to, to do what they do. And, and you have to be impressed with people who know what they're doing. I, I don't know. I'm thinking, what do you think? If you need brain surgery, would you call me? Or would you call somebody who was a real brain surgeon? I, I'll give you a discount. 
I mean, I even do a two for one deal. You want me to do your wife first? I'll do it. I mean, no, you'll call a professional, won't you? There was a commercial out a few years ago where a guy was talking to the doctor over the phone, had a knife on his chest, getting ready to cut himself open. Well, what you need to do is make a decision about four inches long, and then they are right. No way! Well, maybe for some of us there are tight ones. Maybe, I don't know, I can save a few dollars. I mean, what happens? I die and go to heaven. Amen? The truth is, we can feel this way when it comes to being Christians, uh, when it comes to our walk and relationship with the Lord. I, I, I'm just going to tell you, and I've used this <laughs> example before, on Monday and Tuesday, I felt like a lion in a den of Daniels. I had all of these amazing preachers from all over the country here, national preachers, wonderful expositors, and, and guys who knew what they were doing. But after I was all said and done, I began to realize, you know what I was really uh, surrounded by? A lot of folks just like you. A lot of people who love Jesus. Amen. A lot of people who have been with Jesus. And you give me somebody who's been with Jesus, and I'll take them over anyone else. Right. And that's what made the difference in these men's lives. They could speak with authority. With confidence, because they had been with Jesus. Oh, yes, shake their hands. The calluses were still there. These were strong men, hardworking men, men who labored for a living. Yet now, though they did not have maybe the eloquence of speech, though they not, might not be able to articulate their thoughts as well as the orators of the day, though they had not the education that many had in the room that they were in, they had Jesus. Amen. They had Jesus. Amen. And that's what the secret is, isn't it? Right. You say, what's the secret? What's the secret to doing special music on Sunday morning, preacher? Do we have to be the best singers in the whole wide world? Well, we prefer that you can actually sing. No, but I'm serious. <laughs> we actually prefer more this is even more important. Are you ready? That you've been with Jesus. That when you stand and you turn and you look at this group of folks, they see the love of Christ in you. Like we saw in the family that just sang. And I'm telling you, it went all the way through to the little girl in the middle. May I just tell you something? I know that you have all the confidence in the world when you place your confidence in Jesus Christ. You see, there was a secret in these men, and you know what it was. The answer is found in the scriptures, and it's simple. The scripture says they had been with Jesus. Now, you know, some would say that that simply means that they were disciples of Jesus. But you know what? That shouldn't even be a simple statement. To be a disciple of Jesus means you are a what? follower of Christ. So, it doesn't just mean, well, they happen to work with the guy or hang out with him. I really do mean it, it has more to do with being changed inwardly. There was an influence that was clear, clearly manifested by the fact that they had spent time with Jesus. And may I tell you, you might think, well, wait a minute, it's 2,000 years later, Christ is risen, he's in glory at the right hand of the Father, he is present in your life today, isn't he? When you spend time in the Word of God, you have been with Jesus. When you spend time in prayer, when you get up off of your knees after spending serious time talking to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the next person that sees you will see the Shekinah glory of God. Not because of anything good about you, but because you have been with Jesus. Remember those times when you'd get around your grandmother or somebody else that meant so much in your life and you could tell they had spent time praying? They had spent time reading their Bible and, and there was just a focus and an emphasis on the things of God that was so obvious and evident. That's right. The great qualification for Christian influence is a personal experience with Jesus Christ. 
And you know what? There are three elements really to this relationship with Christ that, that, that express this strong Christian influence. And first of all, it begins with, quite obviously, the fact that Christian influence begins with a conversion experience. You, you can feel warm and fuzzy all day long, and you can feel good every time somebody talks about God. And you can uh, just uh, feel spiritual sometimes. You can even be very, very religious. Paul was very religious. But until you make a decision for Jesus Christ, until you trust Christ as Savior, you'll never have been with Jesus. That means you stop and realize that you are a sinner, a mighty sinner, in need of a mighty Savior. And you ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart to be your Savior. That's where it all begins. There will be nobody that will have the power of God on them who doesn't have the power of God in them. Amen. And that means, yes, to Jesus Christ. That means that you turn from the world and you turn to Him. Amen. Friend, if you're here this morning and you can't say that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know, for sure that you're on your way to heaven when you die, you don't want to walk out of this place, you don't want to leave without making the most important decision of your life, my friend, and that is trusting Christ as your Savior. Recognizing that he loves you so much that he died for you. He went to the cross and he paid for the sins of the world, which include your sins. And should you have been the only person that was ever born, he would have died just for you. That's how much he loves you, my friend. Would you trust him today? The most important encounter, first and foremost, is knowing Christ is saved. And then we also see a personal experience with Jesus means communion with him. And I will tell you that there are, anytime you have a group this large, there has to be probably somebody in this room who knows Christ as their Savior, but they're not really having communion with Him. You say, well, what's communion? That's the Lord's Supper, isn't it? Communion is 24-7, my friend. That is a walk in relationship with Him. You know, Jesus chose 12 that they might be with Him. And I just believe there are many reasons for why he chose the 12 and used these 12, but I would have to include in this reason the, the fellowship. Jesus enjoyed fellowship. Amen. Did you know that Jesus enjoys fellowship with you and I? Amen. He wants a relationship. A relationship is fellowship. Amen. And anytime we miss out on that, we're simply saved, and that's sure better than nothing. But we are not going to have the kind of influence on this world that he would want us to have if we don't get a hold of this personal walk and relationship that we can have with him. Yes, it means that you're saved, first and foremost. And now you've decided, I'm going to spend the rest of my life on this side of this planet, getting closer and closer and closer to him. And when I fall into sin, I'm going to do what I know I need to do. I'm going to take it to the Lord. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the kind of personal communion that we want to have with him. Do you have that kind of relationship was there a time when you had that kind of a relationship? Do you foolishly think that maybe you had that at one time and you can never get it back? Oh, but you don't get it, preacher. I've made too many mistakes. I've been away for too long. Like the prodigal father, Jesus is there waiting for you, ready to receive you back with open arms. How much does he love you? This much, enough to go to the cross for you. So I think he's loving you enough to take you back. Amen. Yes, it's true. There may be some real work that you'll need to do. But no work needs to be done to turn back to him. Except for the turning. Come back, come back, come back. Get back to where you used to be. And my friend, if you've never been there, let me challenge you this morning to know this. If you're saved this morning and you're thinking... I haven't gone beyond just trusting Christ. Well, you're you're making